Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. And uh, tonight I have a special guest going to do our invocation for us, Mr. Darrell Peoples. Scott, you can tell me what you said in just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, sir. It's a pleasure being here tonight. I appreciate this opportunity, and I appreciate all your work and service to our community. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the gift of life. We thank you for this community throughout this county, for people who will rise to the opportunities to serve and give of their time and their talents and their treasure. We thank you for this meeting tonight, and we pray that all the work that comes before us, that everybody will have clear minds and wisdom and be able to make good decisions, and you guide us in that. We thank you for the wonderful people in this county that go beyond these walls each day and, and get up and go to work and serve and do it without fanfare. And we know, Lord, that's what makes it work. Continue to bless us, prosper this area that we might be able to prosper other lives. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. All right, with that, let's uh, do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Uh, <clears throat> next on our agenda tonight is public speakers, and we have one, Mr. Tony Cox. I was asking Miss Gather a few minutes ago that meeting that y'all had a while ago was that recorded and can I get it? Yeah. All right. Uh, welcome back, Tim. Glad to see you, man. Good to see you. <laughs> I, I still love you. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing like being brothers. That's huh? right. That's exactly right. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, I have never ever said I was a sovereign citizen, anything other than American. You remember that bitch? That's right. That night you asked me, what am I? And I told you I'm American. I ain't Republican. I'm not Democrat. I'm an yeah. American. Me and Mr. Burr was having a conversation not too long ago, and he said he wasn't a conspiracy theorist. And I said, I, you're right, I'm not either. I said, I believe in solid evidence. And if the evidence points and says there's a conspiracy, then there's a conspiracy, right? That's just like last year when the county commissioners voted 5-0 to bar me from county commissioner meetings for six months. They done that. So, individually, they violated my constitutional rights. They violated, deprived me of my rights for two meetings. Said I could not come here, I could not speak. Well then, when all five of them did it, that was a conspiracy, wasn't it? So it ain't no theory. That was a conspiracy. But, uh, funny thing is, was talking, and also I got a letter about it. That's mail fraud on top of that. Mail fraud ain't a good thing. <laughs> Feds don't like it. Well then, you know, I was talking about the last time about the fraud of the uh, first stuff that was sent to the plumbing licensing board down there. Well, there's a second part. Mr. Boswell, he said he wasn't part of that. Well, I don't think he was. But the second part where they said that I was operating my business and I'd done that work over there, and the tech proved it, didn't have no insurance and stuff. Boswell told me over there in front of Thomas that night, he said, uh, plumbing licenses board, they gonna show you. He didn't know Thomas was reading the letter, said, I ain't done nothing wrong. So uh, that's more of them letters, though, more of that mail fraud. 
I sure would like to settle this thing up. I just want to be done with it. Um, and you can, you can try however you want to to stop my free speech. I'm not going out there in the streets and dealing in the streets. People not only be, need to be in the streets demonstrating, they need to be in these meetings like this right here too. Tell it, tell it, tell it. Chelsea Manning just got her sentence commuted. Bradley Manning was the person sentenced. Got the sentence commuted today, got 28 years off of it, whistleblower. We've seen all the things that people in government have been doing to people. Bad stuff to people. We need these whistleblowers <coughs> that'll stop the bad people in our government from doing bad things to us, the people. And we've got to have it. We've got to have it. Well, I got one more thing, but. Thank you, Tony. Sure would like to settle this thing. <laughs> all right, and that's all we have on our list for the night. Uh, any commissioner responses? All right, next I will ask for a motion for the approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bob. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next on the consent agenda, um, are there any items that anybody is concerned with? I move approval of the consent agenda. Thank you, Bob. Second. Thank you, Amy. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, next on our list of the Tonight is Mr. Daryl Peoples is going to bring us some information about how Alamance got started. Thank you for your time again. <clears throat> I was invited to come here back in 2008. We started a, a process at Historic Providence Christian Church, 819 North Main Street to upgrade facilities. Uh, the beginnings of that site were back in 1763. They had meetings to talk about fighting England, forming a new country, and from there many, many things from this area had their roots. We wanted to celebrate that at our 250th celebration, which was 2013. So we developed a program. It started with the Daughters of the American Colonies coming over, putting up a marker. And then each month, we highlighted an aspect of our community that started there. From the American Revolution to Orange County, we were court site for Western Orange, and the birth of Alamance County, the organizational meetings there in the first courts, to the beginning of Graham, <laughs> on to the Elon University. Uh, the decision was made there to start the new school. <coughs> It was voted to be there, and then eventually got land at Mill Point near Oak Trees, and thus the name Elon, meaning Oak. It goes on to the, one of the first public libraries in the state, just about uh, uh, people are buried there from the American Revolution on in that site. So we highlighted the cemetery and the library system. The decision to fund public <coughs> education was made there in the new county, so we highlighted the school system. The whole process was to show not only what happened back then and how these aspects had a common denominator of that site, but also look where we come now. And so thanks to all of you in the county because one of the things was a whole day for Alamance County and the many departments came out, there were displays uh, from the Department of Social Service, Health Department, and because of all the cooperation throughout that year, was tremendous amounts. Dr. Danley spoke on behalf of Elon. He is now deceased and we have him on video. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Richard McBride spoke. We had Chief Blackfeather Jeffries and all of that. Uh, the Honorable Bob Bird spoke about the hospitals <laughs> and and it's such I had 70 hours of footage 60,000 steals and I edited it to an hour and a half movie. You're supposed to say thank you, Jay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you appreciate that editing, I know. Well, the bottom line is now we have a DVD. It's called A Place for All Times. I went out and I, I did pan shots from up in the air. We've got drone shots. We've got stagecoach wheels. We've got uh, babbling brooks. 
don't say anything. <laughs> we have so many other effects added, and the filming, the part that Scott Ward did is impeccable, wonderful. But we didn't have all professionals filming, so we have some that were a little nervous, but I had to use that footage too. And so don't look at it for all of the technical aspects, although it holds up well with that, but the content <coughs> is there. And I think it would be a great item for families to have and uh, to pass down to future generations about that site. Now, the thing is, we're not selling them. But anyone that gives at least $10 to the upkeep of your site up there, then we're going to give them one. Uh, as a gift and thank you gift. So that's the way we're not just out marketing them on Amazon or anything like that, but we feel like it would be good to have it. And we feel like that now the community realizes that this little congregation of about 65 or 70 on Sunday for 250 years has taken care of a, a piece of property that is invaluable to this area and all the different components. So the idea was to get that down finally so people could celebrate our area mm -hmm. and we appreciate you letting me speak about it tonight and however, if you want to show it on the channel or whatever, it's fine with me. Uh, it's worth seeing just for the <laughs> violin music that was in there. <coughs> Michelle played. Some of the background. Yeah. Uh, Alamance Corral's in there. Copa dancers are in there. It's, it's, it moves from not only historical things, it's entertaining, and it's got a, a, a pretty decent storyline. Uh, the Alamance News Gleaner is in there. Your boss is in there. So uh, you'll see a lot of people that you know, and many of you will be in it. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. How do we get one? <clears throat> call the church number, uh, or you can call my. Well, it's all forwarded to me 24 7. So uh, the easiest number to remember is 228 1974. And it'll go to me, and I'll arrange how to, how to get them to you. What was the primary reason the church was at that location? Was that a main road through there, or watch the movie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on! He's not going to give away the whole movie to you. Watch me give the spoiler away. <laughs> spoiler alert! <laughs> okay, it was on the old and uh, Chief Blackfellow talks about this. The old Indian path, okay. you know, the trading path. Uh -huh. It right. came right through there. It's one of the highest points in this area. It's also had a spring nearby for water. So it was a height, protection, trading path, and they would gather at those meeting houses, this being one of the most popular because it went way down at Cane Creek or somewhere. It was yeah. where everybody was. And that's where the communication system back then and what's going on there, what's going on here. And as a result, they started gathering at that, that spot. And, uh, but that, that is uh, covered in the movie about okay. that. You're right. And to let you know, we were going to show part of the video tonight. The DVD player is not working. So, oh, a, again, we thank Daryl and, and his we, church. We were needing a trailer. I mean, we, you know, we, to kind of get I can produce a trailer. That's right. <laughs> uh, but, but the plan is uh, we will put this on the county's paint channel and uh, make sure that it is, is seen. And um, it, it's just been a, a labor of love for Daryl. And um, we, we had a lot of support from county staff yeah, right. on this as well. And I just want to thank Daryl uh, for everything that he has done. This it truly has been a labor of love. Well, we, we wrote, uh, I wrote about uh, $200,000 worth of grants. See, we had to redo the whole building, and rewire it inside and out, all the facilities <coughs> and stuff. And that was uh, two or $300,000. We had yard sales and things, but a, a big chunk of it was grant writing. And uh, to get, just get ready right. for the celebration. Right. And uh, everybody worked together everywhere, so it's a really good process. But, all right. Is, is that my copy? It is. All right. For $10. Is that my ten dollars? <laughs> <laughs> no, I gave one already to oh, the camp. Yeah. But, but you're welcome to have one. <laughs> Thank you, Daryl, very yes. much. Thank, Thank you. you Daryl. Thank you, Daryl. All right. Very good. <laughs> All right, next on our agenda for the evening is uh, county manager to do the stepping up initiative. Okay, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman and commissioners. Um, what you have in front of you is a resolution, uh, and the resolution basically will look at reallocating money that we've already allocated for mental health uh, through Cardinal Innovations. and. Um, Part of our stepping up initiative is, is there are some costs that we've been paying from county budget. 
Uh, there's been workshops that we have paid for. We paid for the uh, group from Chapel Hill to come. So this is kind of that seed money that we're looking for uh, that's already allocated for mental health uh, that will kind of replenish some of the dollars or direct dollars we have already spent of county dollars for this uh, initiative. And, and what it will be doing uh, is adjusting a contract with ARMC for $37,500, uh, Castle County for a Yanceyville Clinic for $12,732 and then with that money again it's about $50,232 that we will be allocating directly towards the Stepping Up initiative. And we worked with Cardinal Innovations and this <coughs> is their recommendation on where we need to make cuts in their existing mental health contracts. Bob, do you want to? Um, no, other than uh, uh, Rick Bruton is here from uh, Cardinal. If he has any comments or anybody has any questions for, for him uh, he'll be taking uh, Deborah Welch's place who's retiring in a couple couple of weeks and um, it's really just a reallocation this is money that is you know we uh, we fund Cardinal 1.2 million dollars which is called maintenance of effort funding which was to equate to what we used to fund the mental health center and after the mental health center morphed into the new model of the managed care organization slash LME local management entity um, we, we don't we, we really have control um, as to how we want that MOE money spent Very much so. and uh, so it's been allocated to the hospital for years and to the uh, some services up at the Yanceyville clinic for years just as a kind of a matter of um, precedent and uh, I think we all feel like um, th those of us involved in the stepping up initiative think that this is a good use of this money for mental health any other questions or comments on it okay <clears throat> I guess uh, I'll entertain a motion if someone be willing to make it uh, I'll make that motion okay thank you Bob and I'll second that all in favor Aye. 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 Uh, nonprofit funding application. Um, I'll introduce uh, Zach Fisher. Uh, Zach is, uh, uh, and what is the is official title with Elon? Elon Alamance Health Partner. Elon Alamance Health Partner. And Zach has uh, been working with Stacy in the health department for a year and a half? Uh, a year. A year. A year, a year of service. <laughs> and one of the things uh, I asked Zach to do, and, and thanks to Stacy for allowing him to do that, is we currently have no process when looking at nonprofits uh, as far as how we budget them. What we have is we budgeted historically. You know, we, there's a lot of different nonprofits we do fund, but it's not based upon the strategic plan. We don't re really request a lot of information from them. It's just we fund them because that's always what we've done. Right. So what this process would do is require uh, our nonprofits to really fill out some paperwork and making sure that it aligns back to our strategic plan. Um, if you remember, uh, we had uh, allied churches that came to our board and said, you know, we need funding. But there really was no process in place to look at another outside agency to look at funding from the county. So again, it was just done historically. So the thought process was if you're an outside agency, and especially if you're a nonprofit, here's forms, here's criteria that we're looking for that you have to submit. And then when we're doing the budget, uh, the Board of Commissioners will hear presentations from the uh, nonprofits, and either we can support them at the current level, a greater level, a lesser level, not at all, or we can look at funding new agencies. Uh, but again, uh, it, it's a process looking at what we do in nonprofits has just been historical, or at least the eight years that I've been here has just been historical. So with that said, I'll turn it over to Zach. Well, thank you. And good thank evening. You, um, I don't have too much more to add to thank you. You <laughs> took all your stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> much, but, um, I can just like point out a couple features of the application here um, that look at uh, the budget for 
um, the program that the um, nonprofit agency is requesting the money for. Um, so it'll show exactly how they're using that money. Um, and then also ask questions about um, having them explain uh, in a description why they're using that money, what that will help them do, and why that um, helps the county with their goals and with their strategic plan. Yeah, I was on the board of United Way when they started doing strategically focusing money and how they broke it down. And it was on, a, on the priorities. It mm -hmm. was, that's how it was funded. Whereas like before, they had always just historically said, okay, you get this, you get that. And it, wor it worked well because some agency really come in line with our vision of what we're looking at in our strategic plan, and some don't. And I think this will be a good guideline for us. I'm in support of this. Uh, I think it adds to accountability and transparency. Right. And, uh, and it aligns our goals with other community organizations' goals, or their goals with our goals, I guess is the important thing. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I did run this by by a couple of agencies on whose boards I serve just to kind of get their feedback. And uh, the main feedback that I got is um, certain organizations are going to have a hard time um, breaking down their client base mm -hmm. only because it's, um, their client base isn't necessarily uh, you're not capturing that information mm -hmm. on them. Like, for example, Alamance Elder Care is one. They get a lot of their services doing information and referral, and when somebody calls in and, and expresses what kind of need they have, and then they're referred off to another community resource, they're not capturing, you know, their ethnicity and mm -hmm. their age necessarily or their income levels and all those things. So I, uh, there's probably going to have to be some allowances as certain agencies fill this out that some of this data is just isn't going to be available but they can annotate and be descriptive about the populations that they're serving that might be well and, and it gives us a better view it'll give us a better of what view, right. they are doing right. well, i'm not going to vote for this thing because <coughs> the taxpayers in alabama county should not be funding private organizations that is ridiculous i think any kind of commissioner that votes for this kind of thing is spitting in the face of the taxpayers. People that pay the taxes has, has required, this is ridiculous. This, and I'll make a motion that we, anything that's funded has to come before the county commissioners and be voted on one by one. Let me ask a question. In the budget process, what, what's the total dollars that we put out for nonprofit? For instance, this last budget year. About 150? Yeah. Or, uh, About not <coughs> if you take out the chamber, which I consider is a contract for economic development. Yeah. Um, outside agencies are about $150,000. Mm. That's ridiculous. Or is it less? It's, it's more than more that. More than that. That's or, ridiculous. <coughs> but and, but that, that's historical from the uh, last 20 years probably. I don't make it right. Yeah. The taxpayers is the ones that's paying that. And they and people don't mind giving, but it shouldn't be out of Texas. That's my opinion. How many in and I'll stick order? to my motion. Um, I don't have that information from. I can get that yeah. information. We had one. I'm not going to mention the name of the agency or the uh, group, but uh, <coughs> we used to have them come before us. <laughs> and the the table. And, and we did the last two years. Yeah, and yeah. ask so questions the of them and and. and Again, I'm not going to mention the name of the because I like the person, frankly, and I I, I I I like supporting his what he's involved in, what they're involved in. <clears throat> but uh, he got frustrated and he got up and he says the same song and dance every year. And those verbatim, that was what he said. <laughs> I thought, now you're wanting us to give you money with you stating that <laughs> it's the same song and dance. But uh, well, I think that um, I disagree with Bill a little bit because. Um, a lot of these agencies are providing safety net kind of services that if they didn't provide, they'd fall to the county anyways. Um, some of them deal with quality of life that helps in economic development. Allied churches that we haven't been funding, um, Kim Cropper came and made a pretty compelling argument as to why they might deserve some funding and, you know, uh, stable housing, homelessness is a big community issue that impacts the Stepping Up initiative, for example. Uh, so I, don't, I, I wouldn't want to just say 
carte blanche, we're not going to fund any outside agencies. I think we just need to well, look we can at take them. them we can take, take them one, one at a time. time. Right. Well, and let all the, this is and let the commissioners vote for them. And that's what Each this does. It gives us a picture of what they are, who they are. This helps us to make that And to be honest, I think it actually it'll weed a few of them out that don't want to mess with it. Right. Right. I mean, I because it is you. intensive. Yeah, I think you're right. And and we, you know, during during my time here, I've not weeded any nonprofits out. I think the only nonprofit that we have not funded is uh, what the Human Relations Committee that went to fund right. is the only nonprofit <laughs> that is no longer funded. Yeah. But the rest of them have been funded since the beginning of time, and then. When you ask why they're funded, well, that's the way it's always been done. But if you have a process and they have to justify what they're asking for, and if the outcomes are not what this board right. rejects, we'll you have the, the, the board will one. interview each group that comes in front of you. And you'll have the chance to ask questions. This is not staff saying that we're going to support these. This is given an opportunity for the public to say, hey, here's a process. The process be really be begins here, but it ends with the board. So and you may get funded. As long you as may we not. get to vote on each yeah, one. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. That, 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 is, yeah. that doesn't change. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but in, again, in the past, there's just not been any information that's really been shared with you yeah. about what they're doing with your money. <coughs> what and is this makes them more is transparent yeah. with yeah. taxpayers' dollar that we haven't been in the past. Does it inquire about their finances, what their budget is, yes. and so forth? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. pretty yeah. in depth with yeah, a lot like of that. that uh, yeah. 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 If yeah. I can add, I think it gives you a little bit because it asks for specifically what they're going to use the money for mm -hmm. and what they expect to accomplish with it. Then, if they come back the next year and haven't done that, then right. Okay. Some and then does it ask really about their see. total budget? Yeah. Um, I believe it, it does. does. Yeah. Yeah. It does. Okay. Yeah. Yes. It's a, it's a yes, it does. Of the whole thing. I think it's a good tool. Okay. Well, Bill, you've got a motion on the floor. Are you willing to withdraw that to no, that's or not, restate that's, it? Or? I know all I'm asking for is that the county commissioners be the one to decide. Okay, well, we'll and do we that. Uh, basically, all we're voting on is just the, the, the form, well, basically. What we would do, if, with the board's permission, if this is approved, we would put this out on our website. We would then come up as part of the budget calendar and say, Hey, if you're currently receiving funding, if you would like to receive funding, fill out this form, and this is when you will be interviewed by the Board of Commissioners, and the Board of Commissioners will make that decision whether to fund you or not. But this will, when they come in front of you, you'll have information already in front of you uh, based on doing. audit, and based on budget, based on the services that they provide to see if it meets your objectives or not. Well, that's part of the budget. I mean, that's part of my, my motion. Yeah. That we make the, these five, the commissioners make that decision. Yes, sir. Right, and we will, and we're just going to use this form as a tool. Okay. Basically, is what we're asking. I think we'll know more than we've ever known about. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. That's good. So, I like it. All right. Um, I guess we need a formal motion to the, using this as a form to request. Well, it was not out of order. I mean, you already had a motion on the yeah. table. I don't know. Here's where we need our rules. Here's our rules. <laughs> <laughs> so we either, we either have to vote on his motion or he right. uh, amends his motion or amend withdraws the motion. The motion. What, how do you want me to amend it? Just amend it. That We're just going to use this form as information. Okay. Not as a tool then I'll make that vote. part of my motion. Okay. That we use it as information. All right. Make Thank the decision. You. You good, Tim? Yeah. He's Thank you, sir. Accepted that, and yeah. Okay. I got a first uh, motion and a second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. All right. Thank, thank you very you. much. And, and I want to thank Zach for the work that he's done on this. And um, um, uh, he he got put off a couple of months, but I, I appreciate uh, Zach and and also Stacy for allowing him to work on this. Um, there was a lot of <coughs> effort that was put into this. I want to publicly thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, Mr. County Manager. Uh. Um, just one of the, the one thing to remind you of is uh, our meeting uh, with ABSS. We have a joint meeting that is scheduled for uh, January 26 at 8:30 at Vaughn Road. So it's in the library. 
Uh, I believe it's a Thursday. It's a Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Twenty fifth. On what day? Twenty sixth. Yes, sir. 25th. Is there any time limit on that meeting? We I think we have till eleven. I thought it was twenty six. Twenty six. Twenty six. Twenty six. Yeah. 26. yeah. yeah. I think there good. is till eleven. Uh, what I have on my calendar. And so that would be eight thirty to eleven. Yeah. There. I think there's like breakfast, uh, continental breakfast beforehand, and then probably start around nine. I think two hours of cover. Because it's going to be a heavy duty one. I don't know if there's any question about it. Um, <laughs> I hope so. Um, <laughs> if, if it, not, didn't, it didn't go that long. Yeah, yeah probably two, two hours, I would think. I believe this one will be a little different than the last one. So. All right. Uh, but that's all I have. All right. Any commissioner comments? I have some comments. Okay. Related to the school board, um, I have some comments about the upcoming redistricting vote that's going to be undertaken by the school board. Um, as you may know, there is a small group of children in the Union Ridge area of the county who were at some point identified to move from the western to the eastern high school districts. I live in Union Ridge. I do not live in this affected area. Many of these families have been known to me for years. Uh, they were dismayed because their families were identified to be moved without any perceived benefit to the system or to these families. I talked to them, I helped them strategize and articulate their positions. As a candidate, I did advocate publicly for them in redistricting forums. I was not an elected official at that time. Part of my platform and my campaign for county commissioner was to bring a new professionalism to decision making. Imagine my dismay when, even before the election, I had unwitting, unwittingly become part of a local government circus by advocating a reasonable position for reasonable people in my community. Part of the school board has ignored the questions and points raised by the affected parents in this area. Instead, this section focused on me uh, before the election and then in some remarks in the newspaper last week. They have. Uh, promoted this idea that I somehow have influenced redistricting decisions and that keeping these students in the Western High School zone is contemplated by the school board, not because it's the right thing to do, which it clearly is, but it is only because the parents are upset and because of favoritism. Now before now, in an effort to preserve dignity and mutual respect with the school board, I'd refrain from directly addressing these baseless rumors. However, as recently as last week, the straw man of favoritism would not be put to rest. I thought that this issue would die on its own, as it should have, because it has no merit. However, people are talking about it again, and I'm reading about it in the newspaper. As the school board contemplates its final vote on redistricting, I feel it's time for me to address those accusations. Folks, we all want the commissioners and the school board to get along, to have good professional relationships, and to work together for the good of our county. Ex excellent public education is a priority for everyone who wants to see Alamance County thrive. However, friends, this is a two-way street. Part of treating other people with respect is not throwing out accusations of privilege and favoritism when they are ridiculous and unfounded. It was noticed last spring by central office that Union Ridge Road appears to bisect the northern part of the county. There was a blob that protruded into the Eastern District and appeared to be an easy call to move the small farming community to Eastern High School. There was never a single reason or purpose given to move these students except that it makes a tidy map. Remember, these children attend AO Elementary and Western Middle, but in ninth grade they would be expected to change high school zones and make all new friends for the sole purpose of a tidy map for bureaucrats. The school system can point to no advantage gained or objective achieved by moving these students to Eastern. And I'm not going to take our time tonight to walk through the reasons these children should stay in the Western zone. Those reasons are valid and stand on their own and have nothing to do with favoritism. The sole purpose of moving these children to Eastern is to make people feel better about other children in the school system's changes. These Union Ridge children are being used merely to make a point. These school board members have been quoted as saying the decision should be fair, and everyone agrees with that. And the only fair thing is to keep these Union Ridge children at Western. One school board member was quoted as saying, favoritism can have no place in this enormous undertaking, and everyone agrees with that. And the truth is that favoritism does not have a place in redistricting. 
The decision to keep the Union Ridge area in the Western High School Zone is not made out of favoritism to anyone, but is made because it is the most fair decision. Government should act only when absolutely necessary. Living in freedom means that we get to call the shots and make the decisions in our own lives. When government takes that freedom away from us, it would have, better have a darn good reason. When government takes chil makes children change from one public school to another, it had better have a great reason. Not the appearance of a map. And the reason they have to change schools should have something to do with these children's actual situation. They shouldn't be forced to change schools just because other children have to change schools. There may be valid reasons to vote against the redistricting plan. I'm not saying anything about the rest of the redistricting plan. That is all for the school board to decide, working with Dr. Harrison. The reason that I'm speaking out on this tonight is specifically because school board members have charged in public that I am associated somehow with favoritism and, um, and privilege. Every change in the redistricting plan should be absolutely necessary to achieve important goals for our community and to help our public school system be successful. As property owners, we all want that because our property values are closely tied to the health of the public schools. We have to resist using the power of the state to alter people's lives when the system doesn't benefit and children are actually hurt. I would not have weighed in on this issue publicly and I would not have used my commissioner comment time to address this issue had I not felt implicated and attacked in my, in my official role. Again, I want to have a good relationship with the school board but those who spread rumors through the media are going to be addressed. So thank you for seeing me. Sorry to Sorry. run the media. <laughs> Can I good job. Good job. Your, your, your comments, uh, uh, Amy, are, that's not the preponderance of the school board. No, that's, it is not the preponderance of the school board. This, There's, I, don't, I, I think that it's clear from people reading the newspaper where the different school board members stand on that. My purpose tonight is not to identify or to call out individual people. Um, I, I really want to have good relationships with school board members um, and with the board as a whole. But there has to be mutual respect. Okay. Any Thank other you. comments? Well, this is one of the reasons why I'm thinking two hours might not be enough. <laughs> this is all I'm going to say about this issue. I'm not going to address this issue anymore, and I'm not talking about it. By the time we meet with the school board, the redistricting decision they're will have been made by the school board. They're going to tomorrow, I think. They're is having a right? work session work tomorrow, work tomorrow work session and tomorrow. they're voting on it on January 23rd. So right. when we meet with the school board, their redistricting plan will be done. And this is all I'm going to say about this. I have no more. This is it. So Dr. Harrison will be presenting his recommendations tomorrow, and then, to my understanding, they'll vote on it at the right. re next regular meeting. That's okay. what I've heard. Yeah. Very my good. opinion is what she's saying is absolutely correct mm -hmm. and political, but it's also political for what they're doing with Graham and Cummings, and it's also political <coughs> what they're wanting to do with shipping kids from Western to Williams. And... Uh, Everything I have never seen so much positioning in my life over a county that has not grown in square miles and basically a county that has not grown in population since they've changed. How many times have they changed the redistricting plan? <coughs> what, 15, 10, As 15 times? times yes. <laughs> Probably between 5 and 10, I think. Uh, well, it's did it closer to 10 than 5. And it's stunning to me that uh, it can't be done more business-like, and it's solely for the purpose of getting the figures to where they can justify, in their minds, the need for a new high school. And uh, I promise you that uh, two hours will be lucky to cover adequately in two hours, because a lot of head knocking, I think, is going to take place that day, if anybody's got gumption enough to knock heads. And I think we do on our board. I'm not sure about theirs, but... Uh, I can uh, tell you on theirs they do. Well, we'll find out. All right. No other comments? That we will be adjourned. Thank you very much. Very good job. Oh, watching the Allen Ants County Commissioners meeting.
Meetings of the Commissioner's Board occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. Typically, the first meeting of the month is at 9 a.m. and the second meeting of the month is at 7 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting is broadcast on Time Warner's public access channel on the second and fourth Wednesday of each month at 10 p.m. You can also access this meeting through our website at www.alamance-nc.com. Please visit our website for more information about watching meetings online. For technical questions regarding this meeting's online or television broadcast, please contact our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. Please note that this address is for technical questions only. Questions regarding the content of commissioners' meetings may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. Click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about our commissioners, read minutes of past meetings, access agendas, and find other information about the County Commissioners. You can send mail correspondence to the Commissioners by sending it to the Alamance County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners meeting.